Hello everyone, and in this week's After Effects scripting tutorial, I'm going to be going over the newest scripting changes to After Effects CC 2021. If you're not already aware, these are mostly regarding motion graphics templates, and uh, they basically add a lot more compatibility with things like switching out images, changing the sources of those images, as well as a few automation tricks for motion graphics templates. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link. Be sure to also follow us there for coding updates as I always upload code on there way before the videos themselves. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, you can join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and many more things. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can check out the link in the description to become a channel member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, where you can get cool perks, including Discord member status, uh, which you can see we have a couple members here active, as well as some who are active in different time zones. So let's go ahead and dive straight into this quick tip video as there are just a few things to go over in terms of the updates. If you want to check out the updates for yourself, you can go to the After Effects scripting guide. Uh, I'm just using the PDF version, but if you go down to the change log, we can see all of the After Effects 18.0 or March 2021 updates. And they pretty much are just all regarding media replacement, but it is quite a feature that they've added. So let's go over these. In order to basically reference these, you first need an AV item. Essentially what this means is that an AV item is any project item over here in your project panel that has some kind of audio video. This could be an image, uh, a music file, or a video. And one of the most common ways to access this, of course, is by saying app.project, and then you want to grab whatever the number of your item is. So in this case, if I wanted to grab this JPEG file, this would be item number one. And if I wanted to grab this audio file, this would be item number three in our project panel. So that's the easy way to grab those. So the first method that we have in our new feature is, is media replacement compatible? This essentially checks if whatever AV item you're providing is able to be swapped out with any motion graphics imagery. This property is read only, so you can't really change if you want something to be uh, replaceable. It sort of just depends if it's an actual solid source or a piece of footage with a file source. The next thing we're gonna go over are a couple of useful methods. The first of which is add to motion graphics template. If you've ever used a script before to add things to a motion graphics template, this is very common. But now, of course, we have the ability to add an AV layer type. Instead of referencing the project panel, which contains AV items, an AV layer is whatever one of these items is represented inside of a composition. So I have this music file here. This is the AV layer version of it and we can access that easily inside of our composition like we get any other layer. But now we have the ability to add an AV layer, which always has a file source, to a motion graphics template. Usually we're adding properties like a color control effect or a slider, but now we have the ability to add a layer source to our composition's motion graphics template. There's also a method a bit more detailed than that, which allows you to add a layer to your motion graphics template in the composition of your choosing, but you can customize the name. So if you wanted to call this, say, replaceable media, then you would now have a sort of better understanding of what it is in your motion graphics template with this customizable name. And the last AV layer method is can add to motion graphics template. This is basically going to give us a value of whether or not this is going to be able to be added to our template. Is it compatible with motion graphics? If so, then we're going to return true. If it is not compatible, it's going to return false. This is maybe something that you wanna check if you're not sure, if you're using a special media type, is it compatible with this yet? This is a way you can check that. Now let's go ahead and move on to our property uh, methods and attributes that have been added, which essentially are also involving our motion graphics template. If you're not familiar, a property is anything that is basically an effect or a value of some kind of sub property of your layer. This could be something inside of here like intensity or tint amount, or another example of a property could be like position, scale, or even source text. So properties can not only refer to those kind of things, but they can also refer to motion graphics templates themselves. 
For example, if I add this image into my motion graphics template, which is sort of the big new feature, by default, this needs to have some kind of alternate source. So that way, if it's missing or there's an issue, it can basically use that. Now, alternate source is a read only property. So this is just to tell you what the alternate source would be. Um, so this is going to return a read only value. You can't set what the alternate source is, but in a few lines, we'll get there. So if you have uh, an image or some kind of AV item or layer added into your motion graphics, this is going to be whatever the alternate source for something that goes wrong. Then we have can set alternate source. This is going to be useful to tell us and this is only read only, so we can't change it, but this will tell us if our essential graphics property supports this kind of media replacement um, inside of here. Again, there are only a few limitations of what can't be replaced, but in general, if you have an image or a video in a pretty normal format, you shouldn't have an issue with this. But this will return a true or false. True, of course, if it can be uh, an alternate source set, or false if you cannot set it. And lastly, the method itself so that we can change the source is set alternate source. This just requires a new source, which is going to be equal to an AV item object. That's just gonna be another piece of footage inside of here. So if you wanted to set, say the backup source for this image to be another image, you could do that. So that way, if there's any dependency problems, you have a nice looking backup of your choosing. And just to finish off, of course, we need to access this again by using project.item, whatever item number, or however you've decided to access your project item source. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That is my overview of the After Effects CC 2021 scripting updates, mostly all to the media replacement addition to motion graphics templates. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out all of these, including the link to the guide where this is all located in the GitHub link. Make sure you follow us there as I upload code on GitHub way before the videos come out. Also, you can join our Discord server and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and communicate with community members and experts who are also members of the YouTube channel. And speaking of which, if you want to become a channel member, you can click the link in the description, become a member supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, get cool perks, get shout outs, like uh, if you're present, and you can also join things like live streams and other fun events. Thanks again for watching everyone. We'll see you next time. Please help, please help. Yes, is it?